This is how much personal debt is in the audience tonight. And there's two crazy things about this number. A, how big it is, and B, how good you all are at playing off like it's no big thing. I mean, remember back in high school when we all read the Scarlet Letter about Puritanical America and Hester Prynne had to wear the A for adulterer on her shirt? Well, we don't have to wear the letter A, but we all have credit scores. Now, I call this talk the secret shame because in a day and age where we announce every one of our personal proclivities on the internet, the one thing we don't talk about is our personal debt, not to lovers, not to spouses, not to family, and certainly not to friends. And this goes back thousands of years. In the ancient biblical language of Aramaic, the word for debt was the same as the word for sin. And this stretches even to the present day. For instance, the high priestess of personal finance, Susie Orman, if you watch her show, it's about sin, redemption, and the path of repentance that includes cutting up your credit cards. However, the technical reason why you're so in debt is this equation, which is the equation for compound interest. If you have a liberal arts degree, don't squint too hard at the screen. You still won't understand it. And that's half your problem. Now, all the major desert religions thought debt and money lending was incredibly dangerous to social cohesion. So the Christian church in the 12th century outlawed money lending with interest. So that naturally led to King Philip II borrowing money from Jewish money lenders so he could launch a crusade against Muslims halfway around the world. That's a pretty toxic brew for social cohesion. Shakespeare covered this topic in The Merchant of Venice in the character of Shylock. If you remember, Shylock lends out money and demands as collateral his pound of flesh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in the modern day United States, for the first time in human history, obesity is positively correlated with indebtedness and poverty. So if the bank wants five pounds of flesh, no problem, we can put it up as collateral. But the shame of debt is actually an excellent for getting over writer's block. Charles Dickens spent most of his adolescence trying to get his father out of debtor's prison by working these horribly oppressive jobs. And that same template holds true today in India. 15 million children are bonded laborers working subsistence jobs to get family members out of debt. The French novelist Balzac, he wrote 80 no novels and short stories all to get himself out of debt because like so many of you in the audience tonight, he was really bad at startups and lost money with each one, including growing pineapples. Dostoevsky, the Russian writer, Crime and Punishment, he's proof that having epilepsy and a gambling addiction are really bad ingredients for personal financial management. <laughs> but the, another cure to shame is shamelessness. So John Paul Getty has the famous quote, you owe a hundred dollars to the bank, that's your problem. You owe a hundred million dollars to the bank, that's their problem. So go big, go home. But we here in the United States, we have the most lenient bankruptcy laws of anywhere in the world because we love a second chance. We love the dawn of a new day. And we love giving people the chance to go in debt again. In Japan, which has a much more stricter culture of shame than us, a rather depressing statistic, in 2003, nine people a day took their own lives directly attributable to their own personal debt situation. But let's, in the 1950s, all this credit expansion, the invention of credit cards, the modern day credit card, where you get your money from a bank and not a mean money lender. Also, in the late 80s, the key is the computerized FICO credit score. So you can be who you want to be because the most salient part of your identity is your credit score. Go dress how you like. The bank's already figured out how much you're good for. So as I leave you here today, sure there's all sorts of modern enslavers who make your life miserable, but if it's any consolation, 
that feeling of nausea and dread you feel every month as you go through your bills, it's as old as humankind itself. Thank you very much.